scientists have now brought back dire wolf one of the species that went extinct 12,000 years ago is now brought back to life using science and technology <laughs> Now, these were the type of wolves that used to be almost the same size as a full grown human being sometimes. And these wolves were famously known for in a TV show named Game of Thrones. <laughs> where Jon Snow for the first time picks up the pups of the dire wolves and then the wolf grows as huge as Arya Stark. And apparently this right here is the first look at the new dire wolf that scientists have genetically created. Now take a look at how these things these are howling. These are the first animals to be brought back from extinction. They're named Romulus and Remus and they're dire wolves, which is a species that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. They used to roam North America for over 200,000 years, but died out when mammoths disappeared as ancient humans took over the planet. But we've somehow unvaulted them because when scientists found ancient dire wolf fossils, they examined them and found DNA. And what what they did with it is insane, as after using that DNA as a blueprint, they edited the DNA of a modern grey wolf to match the dire wolf, then placed the DNA into an egg and had a dog carry the pregnancy. Wow. Which is why these are the first animals. So they basically brought back the dire wolf by using the DNA samples of the dire wolf's fossils and they decided to infuse those genes and DNAs into a grey wolf which has now given birth to the dire wolves. Now since the scientists brought back the dire wolves which went extinct 12,500 years ago to be exact, a lot of people are asking questions on whether if they can bring back the dinosaurs because if this is possible then obviously this means that they can even bring back the dinosaurs to life. Now recently there was an interview which was done with the guys that actually brought back the dire wolf to life and this is the research team that is responsible for actually bringing back this extinct species to life and they actually shared some information about the dinosaurs and they also showed this tiny mammoth baby that the lab is currently working on and it's probably going to take a couple of years for this mammoth to come to life and once it does it seems like the mammoths are now going to be returning which is extent all the way before the ice age so those things are now being brought back to life as well and they also shared some of the details about the dinosaur project because initially they said in this interview that it's not possible to bring back the dinosaurs because they apparently don't have the dna samples of the dinosaurs they need some sort of a soft tissue in order to be able to bring back the dinosaurs but just a couple of days ago it seems like they actually found soft tissues that was lying in inside one of the dinosaur fossils and this is where everything is going to be changing forever in terms of science take a look at this video organization uh, in the u.s and we're constantly monitoring them and studying them to understand what the long-term potential for rewilding extinct species uh could be over time that's a very thoughtful exercise that's not going to happen cute. anytime soon we're actually going to probably engineer a couple more so that we could have a perfect pack size of like five to eight that's where mm. a lot of wolf packs typically uh, uh grow to but this is is incredibly important for conservation because it's forecasted that we're going to lose up to 50% of all biodiversity between now and 2050. And we know that modern conservation is fantastic. It's just not working at the speed at which we're eradicating species. So they're actually going to be making more of these dire wolves so that they can like create a whole entire pack and we can have dire wolves all over the world. Our goal with uh, a lot of our species like our dodo project, our thylacine project, and even our woolly mammoth project is to reintroduce those species back into the wild in collaboration with indigenous people groups, private landowners, and the government. Right. So we actually are working with uh, one very large uh, indigenous people group that would love to have dire wolves back on their sovereign land, but mm -hmm. it's just a very long process. Just to be clear, you have no plans to bring back dinosaurs, but you know, that <laughs> is potentially where it could That's lead, That's the question isn't it? everyone's asking. Well, we get the dinosaur question all the time. You know, fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you feel, there is no dino DNA, and there's also not megalodon DNA. So those died off way too long ago. Right now, the oldest DNA we 
beings is about 1.2 million years old. Which so as you've seen, the scientists that actually worked on bringing back the direwolf, they said that there is no dino DNA that they've found so far. But just recently, a couple of weeks ago, we got a latest information stating that they have found some sort of a soft tissue. And the fossil of the dinosaur is obviously completely decomposed. But then they actually found a small soft tissue, which actually looks like blood vessels and collagen and even some cells that have been found preserved in some dinosaur bones. Now this right here is basically what the dinosaur tissue looks like and this is the soft tissue that they actually found. Let me just zoom this right here. Now these are like the fossils and they still have like all the blood cells that are still present in there and this was found way deep inside one of the tiny bones that they found of the dinosaurs. And in here you can actually see there is a very tiny portion of soft tissue that is still present. And this is right here. They just zoomed it in with a microscope and you can see that this is literal flesh that you can find in the dinosaur fossil. And now the whole scenario of what the scientists were basically talking about, them not having the DNAs or all those samples in order to recreate the dinosaurs. So, so that's the reason why they're unable to bring it back to life has probably changed. They still have a very, very minute chances of recreating whatever DNA they might end up finding using these soft tissues that they've just discovered. I was also watching Joe Rogan's podcast recently where he took a look at the dire wolf that they've just created. And immediately the question rises up as to whether or not if they can now create dinosaurs and if they can create a dinosaur that never even existed they, they can basically genetically modify like the whole genes and create a new species of its own and if science is actually capable of doing this stuff or not isn't that one of the things they did in Jurassic Park that they made a dinosaur that didn't exist before the big giant one uh, the yeah. Adominus Rex yeah. right that was something they created that's correct? something they, they created I think from a technology and genome engineering perspective that is eventually possible Ooh, so, so they could easily crazy. make a T-Rex I wouldn't say not I wouldn't easily, say easily yeah. but they could at some, at some future state at some future state I think we'll have like you know the CAD software of biology where you can engineer almost anything oh my god this, that oh man that's actually scary because at this point, after they've created this whole dire wolf from Game of Thrones coming back to life after 12,500 years, it just seems like we humans are advancing in such a fast pace. We are basically trying to do things that God never desired us humans to do. Now, obviously, because the dire wolves went extinct for whatever reason that is, and that was completely God's decision. But now it seems like we humans have taken nature in our own hands, and we are now genetically creating something that is not supposed to even be alive in this generation. Now, the research team that actually created this whole dire wolf, they gave like a full documentary on how they did it. And they also confirmed that it's not 100% dire wolf genes. It has a mixture of the gray wolf as well as the DNA of dire wolf which means that it's not a hundred percent pure dire wolf so obviously we don't know on how huge this wolf could actually grow into maybe it's not going to grow as big as the real dire wolf or, or maybe it could grow even bigger than the dire wolves and they have no idea on what kind of diseases this wolf might catch because they have never studied it they have no idea on its habitats what it eats and how it hunts and now the wolf seems to be in some sort of a captive location where the research team says that they have five acres of land and they have been monitoring the wolf in order to keep it safe and this right here is basically how the wolf was actually created take a look at this stuff that's the first this is the howl. howl of the dire wolf it has not been heard in more than 12,500 years because that's when this fearsome wolf species went extinct when they but now cute. in a world first it is back american biotech company colossal biosciences claims to have achieved this milestone the same company that is trying to resurrect the mammoth dodo and tasmanian oh wow look at that stuff so they are currently recreating the mammoth and this is the current condition of the mammoth it seems like it's going to take a couple of years for the mammoth to like fully get grown and they're also creating whatever this species is. What's that called? I think they actually give it a name. Hold on. Dodo and Tasmanian tiger. Wow, it's a tiger? It looks like half dog and, and like half cat. Looks very weird to be honest. So they are basically creating these three things. They have like this dodo bird, which is supposed to be like super huge in size. And then this weird tiger thing, man. Never heard of this thing before. And last month, used mammoth DNA to create a woolly mouse. Now, it has created three wow. dire wolves. They are snowy white puppies. And they have been doing what most wolf pups do. Howling, napping, chasing, and tussling. 
Yo, those are cute. But they are nothing like the other pups that roam the earth. They are the result of a high-tech challenge. Their genetic makeup has been hacked with advanced tools and ancient DNA. The DNA of dire wolves, the same animals that inspire the canine. In so this is the current condition of the wolves. Like, they have, they've actually grown into, like, the teen no phase. and Dyrus on the popular TV series Game of Thrones. These top predators once roamed North America until they went extinct. They were larger in size than gray wolves. They had a wider head, thicker fur, and a stronger mm -hmm. jaw. Now just for example, if you guys want to know how huge the dire wolf actually is, they created this dire wolf in the TV show called Game of Thrones. So you kind of get an idea of the size of this thing. Look at that. So these were like the regular wolves that's like around her. And this right here is a dire wolf, man. And just look at how huge it looks in size compared to any other regular wolves. So this is basically how the real dire wolves used to look like. Look at that stuff. It is massive in size. Massive. I'm here, yeah. And that is what they have been trying to recreate once again. Now, we don't really know if the wolves are actually going to grow as huge as what the original dire wolves look like. But obviously, time's going to tell. It seems like they're preserving the wolf and they're just trying to keep it as safe as possible. They're going to create more of those things. And this right here is the mammoth that they're currently working on. It's, it's a very tiny little baby that is still yet to hatch. And this is what the Colossal team is currently working on in launching this whole project in a couple of years from now. So just imagine if this whole mammoth comes to life. And also as a test, they infused the DNA of this mammoth into a mouse. And it turned out that the mouse that was born was born with a lot of traits that's similar to the mammoth. So as you can see, the mouse here, it's all hairy, which is very close to how the mammoths used to look like. And they're huge in size as well. Mouse. Look a at that. new kind of mouse created using gene editing to give it woolly mammoth-like traits. The reason that they're doing this is they want wow. to try to bring back the woolly mammoth, but they're not literally cloning or resurrecting it. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're trying to edit existing animals' genes to make them look and then more like a woolly look mammoth. Specifically, they plan to do this with Asian elephants, their closest living relative. And along the way, they created the woolly mouse by analyzing preserved DNA from woolly mammoths to pinpoint genes that made them suited for colder weather. Wow, so the seven genes are like all basically related to the hair growth. As you can see, there are clear differences between between the normal mouse and the mammoth mouse. Uh, it has a lot of hairs and it's also huge in size. Just so you know, this is what the scientists are trying to recreate. A massive dinosaur sized elephant that has a lot of hairs. I don't know what they're doing with science, but it seems like they're just going crazy with it. And they're trying to do something that God has already destroyed. Now, obviously, with all of these things happening around the world, there actually rises a question as to whether or not if they can bring back the dinosaurs. If you look at all the Hollywood movies and everything that the media has been telling us so far ever since we were kids. I mean, I mean going back all the way to 15, 20 or 25 years ago, if you actually looked at any of the Hollywood movies, such as robots taking over the world and humans create this AI, which is is actually way more intelligent they take over the world and then they also showed us jurassic park where they alter genes and give birth to dinosaurs and even in the recent jurassic park movie we got to see them creating a dinosaur that never even existed obviously there is a reason as to why god destroyed all of these animals or like the massive giants that used to exist back in those times and that's because god wanted us humans to live in peace and if these creatures were alive today it definitely means that they are going to be on top of the foot chain and we humans would not even last a day if you're left alone with no technology in a Jurassic Park. And we obviously know how the movies turned out. Even with all the technologies, it can always go wrong. So it definitely seems like, you know, Hollywood has always kind of just predicted whatever is going to be coming in the future. Or maybe it's not just prediction. Maybe they just altered our mind and just got us ready to reveal the truth that the secret organization or the government or whoever, the big dudes that are controlling the world and its economy and all the plans, you know, it just seems like they probably have had all of these planned many many years ago and they've already declared their plans in terms of movies medias entertainment industry and just made us believe that yes these things are indeed possible and, and now after 20 to 25 years we actually see the things that we have seen in movies from ais to creating robots and now we even have chips that actually controls our mind and you can even alter things in your mind and these were the kind of things that i actually got to see in a movie called ready player one where you get to wear a helmet and a suit and you live in a video game 
game world and you can basically feel stuff you can control the world using your mind and these were the things that was actually possible in that movie and now if you take a look at what elon musk is creating and, and plenty of different gaming hardware companies are creating it seems like all of those fantasies that we saw in the movies are actually a message that they showed us way before the time actually comes and it seems like they're preparing for it and everything that we've seen so far is actually becoming true now honestly guys i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below what do you think if they end up creating a new dinosaur species do you think it would actually be cool if they create like a jurassic park and if they do would you actually go ahead and visit the park after watching the movies of course every movie we know what happens they open the park and they shut it down because things go bad man that's just how it is with these giants and that is why god destroyed all of them but yeah definitely let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think about this stuff would you actually like to visit a jurassic park if they created it let's say another 20 to 30 years from now would you actually be down in order to go ahead and check that park out to be honest i'm kind of excited but at the same time i know it's all very sinister stuff that you know we humans are not supposed to do it and obviously since our soul comes from god and god is indeed a creator which means that we humans at the end of the day we love creating stuff and we just love exploring creating things and doing stuff that's new and forbidden of course so we of course get our nature from god when it comes to creating stuff but i just think that we're taking creation a bit too far at this point that maybe someday god is not going to be happy with what we're doing now, honestly i would love to hear your thoughts feedbacks down below the comments and if you guys did enjoy this video please make a like rating on this video and also subscribe if you guys want to watch more videos like these where i keep you guys updated with everything that goes on in the world from technology to archaeological evidence to biblical stuff and every single thing that you guys need to know about daily affairs in our world this channel is going to keep you guys updated with all that stuff now with that being said hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you guys on tomorrow's video until then take it easy fams and goodbye